Good morning, everybody. Yes, you can. Good morning, everybody. Is it a good day? Are you awake? Why don't you stand with me? It is going to be a fantabulous day. And I'm looking forward to what God is doing. If you need encouragement, talk to Casey. Casey, raise your hand. She stepped out. She's right, she's right there. She's putting her ice pack in there. Um, uh, she's cane free. Had a back procedure. And God is, is working. I, I'm excited about that. And, um, you know, excitement, again, um, you don't know her, but Sister Angeline Tamil, I've quoted her several times throughout my ministry. But I remember she, she um, Bishop Tamil and her, she was the um, principal administrator of our Christian school that I graduated from with me and 21 or 20 other students. <laughs> But we graduated, that's all that counts, right? That's all you think about now. So, um, but one of the things that she always said to me, um, I'm thank, pause, I'm thankful for people that don't just notice, but are willing to talk to you when they see the hand of God on your life. It's not a condescending thing, as in it doesn't have to be an older person saying it to a younger person, but... Um, it, it's, it's all about the presence of God. You know, that, that's at least what we say. Um, and, and she would take me by the, you know, just kind of whisper some things into my ear. And she would say, you know, if you want to build a, a great church, and their church was a great church, um, excitement builds. And um, usually it's hard to build excitement with your mouth closed. And so there, there is a place in God that we become like kids, giddy. This is what God is doing. This is what God is doing. And, and I want to be a part of that wave, the wave of encouragement and excitement because I've never known God to be dull. I've never known God to be boring. I've never known God to be, um, uh, what, what's that word? Um, lethargic and just... Blah. I've never gone into his presence and him say, can you just give me a minute? I've never known God to do that. We are the apple of his eye. He's been waiting for us to wake up. He's looking forward to administering his presence through us in this place. And so um, as we dive into what we started last week, um, one of the most difficult aspects that you'll ever deal with in Christianity. One of the most difficult, why wait till the middle of the year? Let's just, let's just punch it right in the nose. Let's just deal with what's in front of us. So, so let's, let's go in prayer. Um, Brother Garvin, would you lead us in prayer? Father, I love you. Thank you for your kindness and your goodness. Yes. And they all said, Amen. Amen. May God bless you. You may be seated, but take out your Bibles. Um, James chapter 4, one verse is where we're launching from. Brother Mike Simpson, it's good to have you in the house of God. Um, I've been praying for you all week that your health would be better. Are you feeling better? Okay, good. Um, great, to, great to see you. So in James, um, we kind of launch from this. Um, Brother Ryan, are you there? Four and seven? Can you read it loud? Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. Um, so we're talking about the most difficult aspect. Brother Jason, I'm trying to get my sweater down. It keeps on crackling and popping and if you like Rice Krispies. Um, but, um, um, so last week, what, what's, what's the concept that we're dealing with? Submission, submission. Um, to carnal people, it is a cuss word. To spiritual people, it is life. 
Because as long as I am in control, God cannot, will not have his way in my life. As long as um, Brother Spicer, um, you've not met him yet, hopefully one day that you'll be able to meet him. He pastors um, my mother-in-law's church and Brother and Sister Terry, the church that they attend. Um, he pastors there. He's been there for many years. And uh, one thing that he's always said is that as long as talking about God having his way, he will work in your life as long as you, as you make this clear. Number one, I'll never say no and I'll never say enough. As long as you're willing to say, God, you, you're, you're the captain of the ship. You're the pilot of my life. So as long as I never say, no, I don't think so. And as long as I never say, okay, that's enough. Because if you look in scripture, I mean, that, that is a major preaching point. By preaching point, I mean a communication point for churches, for church people, for Christians. Because sometimes we want it comfortable. We, we do. And what we're doing by saying I want comfort is I am leaving all the evidence of the empowerment of God that God used persecution and suffering to bring forth incredible, mind-blowing revival. So if I am on the auctioning block or if I am on that, that place that I feel like I'm being persecuted, the key to persecution is make it through it. Whether, now this is an extreme statement because no, nobody wants to just, I want to die. Nobody. Um, but even if this life comes quickly to a close for you or for me, the message and the relationship with God must go on. We are still being impacted greatly. You may not see the ripple effect, but we are so greatly impacted today in this service by men and women in this area, travelers, preachers, evangelists, prophets, pastors that have invested in you. You are not the total sum of right now. You are the total sum of every investment in your life. And so we as adults, we understand that this concept called submission is, it's not a power kick, it's not, and, and sometimes it's uncomfortable. Maybe not for you, sometimes it's uncomfortable for me to act as pastor. Because correction is not always easy to swallow. But if there's no correction in my ministry, then I just, I create my own reality. And I found that people that do whatever they want to do, say whatever they want to say, go wherever they want to go, have this private relationship with God, and nobody can speak to them, but God is a farce. Is an absolute farce. It, 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 is, it is a pipe dream. It is something that is not reality. Can you back that up? Well, I think there's a lot of backup of that concept because even Jesus said, and we read it in 1 Peter 2 when he's talking about that he says, listen, even your, your employers, be submitted to them. Be a good employee, right? Be, be, give to Caesar what is Caesar's. Give, give to the kingdom of God what is the kingdom of God's. But make sure that, that it work, the church works best when we learn how to run in our own lane. Now, I may, the pastor may be a father figure to the church whole, but I'm not the dad in your house or the mom in your house. We as, as men, we, at some point, we've got to be the priest of our home. As women, some of our single mothers, you are the priest of your home. And so 
So we understand that, that there is an element, there is a, a divine element um, of blessing when we understand authority. When we understand authority. And uh, I, I've lived long enough, um, and I'm just talking, but I've lived long enough to hear a lot of promises that was never backed up. Because it goes until you get correction moment. Because there's, there's um, I don't know, per se, I'm not making a list, but, you know, there's that honeymoon stage. And we're smiling, going on a trip and traveling and eating places that you don't eat at at home and spending this and doing that. And all of us know that's not reality. <laughs> So, so there's that honeymoon, but then there's that, that conflict stage in relationships, right? There's that just like our kids, they're pushing us to see how far we'll let them, we'll let them push us. Um, you know, my kids have, have, don't tell them that I know this. Um, they, have, they have ways, they have individual ways of trying to get what they want. And it's much easier for me to give them what they want if they're nice about it. You know, Dad, have you lost weight? <laughs> My daughter just said that. I'm like, what do you want? No, oh, nothing. <laughs> Whatever. So the point, so when we step into submission, this submission role, that it really is. When, when we live our lives, and this is a constant friction between God and us. Constant friction is letting God be in control. So there was, and I, I believe this, I believe that, that as the church for the edification of the body of Christ, that we have a five-fold ministry. Um, so what, what were the five-fold again? Pastors, evangelists, teachers, apostles, prophets. Okay, so you have five-fold I believe this, and I've been taught this um, early in my ministry, not that every role was evident, I, I don't guess, throughout my entire ministry, but there's always been that hunger and that longing and going after um, information, going after um, uh, people to um, mentor me in certain are in these areas. But I think that we all need to have uh, some kind of a prophet, prophetic voice in our life. In our personal life, um, God did not call you to be pastor, prophet, evangelist. Sometimes you may dabble in some of those. As a pastor, I will dabble in all of those. But to say that I'm a prophet, I know that that's not true. But I operate at times in the prophetic. In fact, every time I preach to you, I'm operating in the prophetic. I'm foretelling Holy Scripture. Okay, so, so we've got to have those voices in our life. And just because you've not had those doesn't make you less of a Christian. But the times that we're living in when the enemy has launched such a great attack against our minds, our minds and our emotions, that we've got to have something more than, well, I think this and I have this opinion and I believe this. And I, we've, got to, we've got to be accountable Got to be accountable. And um, we need, an evangelist gathers. That, that's the purpose of an evangelist. He gathers, he inspires, he brings people together. Um, a prophet guides us, tells us the, the direction. Um, pastors, the purpose of a pastor is to ground you. We walk with you every day. In a sense, we, we know it, it's not an evangelist coming. Sometimes when I go other places and I preach, I, I don't preach heavy. There's not a heaviness of responsibility. And I just, and one, one minister in our church said, you know, he went with me one time and said, you know, you preach totally different. I, I, don't, I don't intend to do that, but I don't have the heaviness. Sometimes when I'm preaching, there is this, can I, I, I'm just talking to you today. Um, 
that there is that heaviness because I am aware of some of the things going on in your lives. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to operate in the holiness of God without trying to make you feel like you just loaded my wagon and now I'm talking to you about it. Sometimes when people come and, and there's a situation um, that I've asked for help in a certain area in our church and um, I may know something about the situation but some of the details that I am choosing not to know so that I can get up and preach the authority of God. And if you say, I just confided in you, why'd you go public with it? Or somebody would say, was that, were you, were you, I've heard this before, were you saying that to me? I mean, you're using, you're abusing the podium to talk about me? And I have answered them, said, absolutely. And everybody else in this church. Because you're not the only person with issues. You're not the only person that's dealing with this. You see what I'm saying? So in submission is that when we are coming, I felt this in prayer this morning, when we are coming to God on our own terms and I'm gonna do what I want and I'm not accountable and you come and go as you, as you please, as pastor, I'm, I'm limited I am, before God, limited of what voice I can give you because the last thing we want is people leading this church that are not accountable, right? And if you're a Christian, Holy Ghost filled, you do know this, right? You do know that there will be people in hell that spoke in tongues, that's heavy. Because speaking in tongues does not give you eternal security. So our involvement, so so in James, it is just, it's not just a verse. There's really a lot more to this than just James making one statement or two statements in a verse. There's a lot more to it. In in Peter, one one of the things, we talked a little bit about Moses, and we talked about our relationship with with people, husbands, wives, kids. Um, You know, the Bible says, provoke not your kids. Well, it does say that. And so, but we should provoke one another to good works. So it's not just provoking. Um, I... I, I had a situation not too long ago between the age of four in my life and currently. I had a situation, it might have happened this week, but it was between the age of four. (laughs) The ungodly live in the ungodly way, leans over before something's about to happen and says, Before we go, can you pray for God's blessing on us? Absolutely, I can. But God will never bless iniquity. So at that role, are are you with me? So at that role, what happened was, I'm not asking God to do something that I know his word won't do but we also pray for sinners all the time. So I'm not asking God to bless iniquity, but I'm standing in the gap as Moses, as Esther, as Ruth and Naomi, as Elijah, Elisha, as all these people did, and they're standing in the gap for a sinful world. And so what I did was, my prayer was very quick. It was very short and to the point. But when I stepped in, I was not asking God to do something merited, on, I feel the Holy Ghost, merited on their relationship with God, their lifestyle. I was asking God as his servant, I'm asking for your mercy. I'm asking for your protection. I'm asking that this sign, and guess what? When that thing happened 
and, and we went and did our thing. Um, when that happened, there was not any problems. Everybody was safe. And my hope and my prayer is that wasn't by chance. When you're asking me to pray, you're invoking the nature of God. So what happens is when submission, submission, when you deal with the concept of submission unto God, it's never been, please hear me, it's never been about what is convenient to you or comfortable to you or this is easier, this is a lifestyle, I just want it easier, I don't want to deal with this, I don't want to deal with that. When it comes to, it's hard to talk about submission without talking about holiness. Because you're not holy because you showed up. You're holy because of the lifestyle. The Bible says flee the very appearance. Run after, not walk fast. Run away from the very appearance of evil. The point is, is that when we stand before God, we are not stained with worldly sin. We are not spotted with worldly concepts or worldly passions. By worldly, I'm talking about carnality. Okay? So there is, please, please hear me at Bible study. You need, you need submission almost more than you need breath. For God to do that. Well, how about, Pastor, to the person that says, you know, I'm good with where I'm at. So you, I, would, I would respond to that by saying, show me in Scripture where that is something that God looked at and said, I'm happy with that. I'm good with that. Why does God use persecution? Why does, well, they're going to say this about me and they're going to do this about me. Or you're going to say, well, this is the way I live because my pastor says so. Because, oh, you're, oh, you're apostolic. I appreciate the fact that we are apostolic Pentecostals. I appreciate that. That is not my, my club. It's not my sword that I beat people up with. I am so thankful today, Sister Simpson, I am thankful today for people like you. Amen. Don't get in front of me. Don't think you know where I'm going with this. People that have stood for truth. I don't know the, all the ins and outs and the, and the personal convictions and the things and the prayer life and all the, the details, of, but people that have said, I, I'm still here. I love truth enough to get involved in that. Not because something is culturally relevant or not relevant. Is this making sense? So I'm thankful for our elders that we were talking last night on the way home, Brother Powers, we were talking about the necessity to have our elders actively involved with our young people and our young people actively involved with our elders because our elders represent something that was going on before you were thunk of, before you were thought of, before you ever breathed your, your first breath. Your involvement, I'm talking about submission, your involvement to the calling of God is more important than how inspired you are when you leave here, how much I inflect my voice, what kind of a personality the preacher has. I don't care if they're monotone and they're preaching the word of God. We've got to combat this idea of emotionalism. We need to be able to worship if we don't have keyboards and don't have drums. I'm reiterating what I said last week. Um, it was a uh, Don Hoofer in his book, The Cost of Discipleship, he used this phrase, cheap grace is the deadly enemy of every church. Cheap grace. When salvation doesn't cost us anything. That stance of holiness is not just, is not just, where we go and what we do or do not wear. And it's, I'm trying to align myself not with people. I'm aligning myself with Scripture. I'm aligning myself with Scripture. And I'm trying to make sure that in alignment to Scripture, Number one, when you're dealing with holiness, 
It is much better when God brings that conviction in your life. Does that make sense? I'm talking to some generalities on purpose. But understand this. But to have a voice in church leadership, there's going to be expectations to ensure that there's just one voice here. Because the multiplicity of voices contaminates any culture just like the multiplicity of gods will contaminate culture. Does that make sense? So there are things that we do that you probably could go to heaven having not embraced. But we're trying to align ourselves having no form of worldliness, carnality, to the best of our ability. So while one screams, man, I, we got our boots on right now, don't we? While one screams, outward appearance, outward appearance, outward appearance, outward appearance, but is not involved in church ministry, both potentially have violated scripture. So just because something tastes good to you, we're not trying to just have one candy stick to the person that is so focused on it's all about the heart, it's all about, well, that's true, it is about the heart, it is. But submission is not submission only when I understand it or agree with it. That's why obedience is better than sacrifice. Now, if, if you're human and you've been in church a while, I have, I would think there could be hypothetically somebody listening to me thinking, oh, I know what he's really saying. You're just waiting, you're waiting for the gut punch. You're waiting, no, really, you'll never, you'll never understand holiness if you don't understand submission and obedience. You'll never get it. You will fight tooth and toenail over things that you agree, disagree with, what you like, what is, what is available to you, you'll do it. So when we come into the house in the presence of God, don't you think that God understands our level of submission? Don't, don't you think that God understands where we are? This is the beautiful thing, ladies and gentlemen. This, I'm not gut punch, punching you. I'm, I'm not picking on, on, on people or ideas. Or, but at some point, we as adults, we've got to come to grips with, there are some traditions that I think keep us a safe distance away from being contaminated from the world. Just like you lock your doors at night to keep people out. Maybe nobody's ever broken into your house, but you're, you're just, I'm not giving them an opportunity. I'm not putting a red light saying, my door's open, my door's open. There's just some things that we should not watch. There's just some things that it may appeal to me, but doesn't appeal to Brother Powers. Some musical genres that, that I may like in, in black gospel and this and that. That he's like, just give me some old hymns. Just, just give me something I can understand the words. You see what I'm saying? And so what happens is, is when we come into this place and we're wanting God, the benefits of God, and God is saying, I can only benefit you based on what you give me. I want God to bless my finances. But you're robbing God every check. He's not going to bless it. And it's a concept of submission, of giving your heart. Well, I can't afford to. That's not God's problem. But God is saying, I will come to you with wherever you are, and I will work with you. I will, come on, if you've never tithed in your life, and, and you're an adult, you should, you should run to this altar and say, God, forgive me for my wrong. That's the blessings of mercy. That's the blessings of grace. And God, I don't want to rob you. But we don't just rob him with our money. We rob him with our time. We rob him with our effort. Okay, so when we come... Let me, I haven't touched this. 
I was, I was going to talk about the path of submission, which I probably am. When you look at Scripture and you look at the Esthers and you look at these characters in the Bible that are so pronounced in our church rhetoric, so pronounced, you can't, you can't just, you're going you're gonna to see this in the next service because I'm, I'm, I'm going to expose some things in a story that you may not have ever seen. Maybe you have. But when, you can't just take the winning blow to the enemy. Say, that's what I want. And forget about the whole process that got that person there. If God removes, my mom and I were talking about this, if God removes pain from your life, you'll never understand mercy. You'll, you'll never get it. God, deliver me from this. Even Paul, they said, whatever the thorn was in his flesh, it could have been a person. It could have been an, an illness. So whatever that thorn in the flesh, and if you know what that is, please let me know. Um, but whatever that thorn is, Sometimes it just rains on the just and the unjust. So, sometimes life just shows up. Sometimes it does. But when I, when I surrender to God in prayer, what I'm doing is I'm open, I'm pushing pause on my life, and I'm opening up the ability for God to speak into my life. When I release my offering to God, whatever your offering is, I'm not talking about an amount of money. I'm talking about whatever you're offering. When you release that to God and there's no strings attached, then God is opened up. If, if, you, if you start boasting about it, you already have your reward. God's not gonna do nothing else. You got what you, you were looking for. But if you want God to really go the extra mile in your life, then, then you walk into his presence saying, I'm gonna enter into a thanksgiving. I've, I've watched people Can you take us offline? Let me know when it is. Please. Thank you for listening. God bless you.